Watercolour is a beautiful and rewarding medium, but it can be challenging to use. In this video, I'm going to talk about nine things that might be holding back your watercolour paintings, and I'll provide some tips to help you overcome them. As always, if you like my channel and the content I produce, please like and subscribe as it helps me create more content for you. All right, let's get started in no particular order. I can't stress this enough. So many times beginners start painting on inferior paper and they wonder why it's so difficult to paint in watercolour. Your paper is, I would say, one of your most important art supplies. Good quality paper, I know it's expensive and I know you don't want to waste it when you are first starting out, but if you're buying cheap wood pulp paper, you're wasting your money anyway. People contact me all the time to tell me that they can't believe how much better and easier it is to paint on good quality cotton paper. You don't have to buy the most expensive paper out there. Just look for 100% cotton watercolour paper. I went to buy some watercolour journals in a local art supply store a few weeks ago and I looked carefully at the labelling on the journals and it said that the paper was 35% cotton. I didn't buy them. I won't waste my money. I've been caught like that before and I won't do it again. A 100% cotton paper I have used that isn't all that expensive is Stonehenge cold press. It's a little bit fragile, but it handles the paint quite well. I painted these pandas on it. Another paper I practice on is Ba Hong Master's Choice cold press paper. It's not as expensive as paper like Arche and Fabriano, but I'm quite happy with the way that it performs. I'll leave links to those two papers in the description of the video. Please let us know in the comments of any less expensive 100% cotton papers that you've used that are good to work on. I totally understand because I am filled with anxiety every time I paint. That blank piece of paper staring back at me always fills me with dread. Watercolours are unforgiving and you can't paint over your mistakes. To get over that fear, I'll sometimes do a study or two first, a practice painting. Sometimes I don't want to do that. I just want to get straight in and start painting. I might start the painting with good intentions and then something goes wrong. So then I just tell myself, all right, no problem. This is a study then. I'll practice on this one and I'll try again tomorrow. Those mistakes are invaluable. They're a natural part of the creative process. So embrace them, don't fear them. You don't have to show anybody your failed painting. It's there for you to learn from. Use the back of it to practice and try out colours on. I've made a video about the planning I do before I start a painting and it's so important when you paint in watercolour. You've got to make sure that your drawing and composition is spot on before you start. You've got to plan where you will preserve the white areas of the painting. You've got to work out your colour palette. How are those colours going to mix on the paper? You've got to work out your order of washes. What will you paint first? There's a lot to plan and not spending the time to do that before you start painting could be a big part of why you're not painting as well as you'd like to. This is where studies are useful to work things out and you may need to do more than one study. Before I start a painting, I mentally plan out the painting process in my head. I often look at my reference photo for about 20 minutes or so and I do the painting in my head before I start. When I feel ready, then I start. I've made a video about overworking your paintings as well. I'll link to it in the description. In an overworked painting, the layers of paint become heavy and you lose luminosity and transparency. When you overwork a painting, you might be trying to pursue excessive detail and you end up losing that beautiful freshness that watercolour paintings are renowned for. To avoid this, Embrace the transparency of watercolours and allow each layer to dry before adding another. Don't fuss with the paint. Get it on the paper and let it do its thing. 
Learn to embrace happy accidents and don't try to fix everything. Often you're the only one who notices where you went wrong. Also, don't try to paint everything you see. Simplify things into basic shapes. You might be using too many colours for one thing, or the colours that you're mixing together might not be good choices. Some colours will muddy a mix, so get to know what colours you have in your paint kit that might make your colour mixes muddy. They're more often than not opaque colours. I think when you're just beginning with watercolour, it's best to limit your palette and don't dip into too many different colours. That will help you to get to know your colours and their characteristics more quickly and it will help you to avoid creating muddy colours. As well as that, it will help with colour harmony throughout the painting. Values are the pigment concentration. The more pigment you use, the stronger your value. Recognising the different tonal values of your subject is really important in creating depth and volume. You need to start with the lightest areas and then gradually work up to your darks. Recognise that one colour can be many different shades depending on how much pigment you use. I see a lot of beginner paintings not showing enough variation in tone or value. Put your darkest darks against the lightest areas to create contrast. The focal area of your painting should be where you put the most contrast. I will sometimes take a photo of my painting when I think I'm in the final stages and I'll turn it black and white on my computer. That allows me to see my values better and I can make adjustments if I think I don't have enough tonal variation. Rearrange things to suit. Don't paint things exactly as you see them. Don't try to record everything you see either. Simplify and eliminate the things that you don't need. Learn about the rule of thirds to help create a balanced composition and learn about balance and symmetry. Distribute visual weight evenly through the painting. If you have a large shape on one side of the paper, counterbalance it with a similar element or negative space on the opposite side. Guide the viewer's eye through your painting with leading lines. Make use of contrast. Use value, colour or texture to create a focal point that captures the viewer's attention. Use a viewfinder or thumbnail sketches before you start painting. Create small sketches and rearrange elements to try to find a pleasing composition before you start painting. Study master paintings. Look for techniques and principles that they may have used in their compositions. Buy a good book on composition and study it. This is a book I have by Frank Webb, The Artist's Guide to Composition. I think this one is out of print, but Frank has another one that I've linked to in the description. And this one here by Tony Couch has a good section in it where he talks about composition. I use this one a lot. It's really helpful. He makes it fairly simple to understand with lots of visuals to help. I've linked to this one as well. The eighth thing that could be holding back your paintings is your choice of brush, or more particularly the size of your brush. This is where I've gone wrong in the past. I've used brushes that were too small for the area that I was painting. This meant that I used too many brush strokes, which led to overworking my paintings. Joseph Zerbukvich, a master watercolourist, often talks about the economy of brush strokes. He says it's important to get the information on the paper in as fewer brush strokes as possible. In his book, Mastering Atmosphere and Mood in Watercolour, he says instead of using a brush that's almost big enough, use a brush that's almost too big for the area that you're painting. I like to use pointed round brushes when I paint. The points allow me to get into nooks and crannies and they allow me to paint around things easily. When I want a fine line, I hold the brush up on its tip and when I want more paint, I push down on the bristles. Experiment with different brush shapes and sizes to understand how they affect your strokes and textures. 
If you stick to familiar techniques, you will limit your artistic growth. Watercolour is such a beautiful and powerful medium to use. It will often paint itself. It has endless possibilities. So don't hold yourself back trying different approaches. Step out of your comfort zone and expand your skills. Challenge yourself to try different subjects. Use salt to create texture. Create deliberate blooms for interest. Embrace the wet on wet technique. Charge colours into one another and experiment with different colours. I'm often asked how I choose colours and what makes me decide to use violet somewhere where there is no violet on my subject. And the answer to that is that I'm not afraid to experiment. Watercolour is spontaneous and it lends itself to experimentation. It truly is the most magical medium to use. Remember that improving your watercolour skills requires lots of practice and perseverance. Embrace the learning process. Do some of my classes and unlock the full potential of watercolour. Before too long, you'll be creating captivating works of art. See the link in the description for the classes. There's also a link there to join my email newsletter. When you do, you'll get access to a full length watercolour tutorial of mine and my guide to the five mistakes new watercolour artists make. I hope this has inspired you to keep at it. Try new things and enjoy the process of creating. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. So this one is nine things holding back your paintings. It's going to need a lot of B-roll, Cole. Mm -hmm. Quiet on set. Mm -hmm. Quiet on set. Action. But it can be challenging to use. In this video, I'm going to talk about nine things that might be holding back your watercolour painting. Paintings. Paintings. I do that a lot, don't I? Paintings. Leo walked in front of the camera again. Yeah. Do I keep going when he does that? For 100% cotton. Why did I pause there? Mm. Do it again. Here we go. Hey. Again. Leo. Leo's misbehaving. Do it again. I'll do it again. Just so that we won't have the hand flapping. Which part? Another. Just in that artistic bit. The bar hong. Yeah. Another paper that I practice on is Bar Hong Mastered mm, Masters. <coughs> Need to do no. Oh. We'll do that again. Sorry. Did you like the way I went? Really important. Yeah. Was that good? Was it a bit overdone? Oh, should I do it again? Do it again. Really? <laughs>